<laughs> it did uh, raise a few eyebrows when I went through the TSA checkpoint <laughs> in, in my uh, carry-on bags <laughs> with all of these cables. <laughs> Hello and welcome to yet another one of our Ask the Expert series here at Boat How To. We're Nigel and Jan, and we're answering your questions regarding boat electrical systems. So let's look at today's questions. I'm burning through zincs at the dock. My guess is there is a stray current somewhere. If so, is it most likely from my boat or somewhere else? And is there an easy well to tell with my multimeter? Multimeter? Mm, not if the boat's in the water, not necessarily, and mm. it's almost certainly not stray current. There's a lot of confusion between stray current corrosion and galvanic corrosion. With uh, stray current, the zinc does nothing to protect you. Mm. With stray current, whatever is on the positive side of the circuit, let's say we have a positive conductor that's chafed through uh, against some grounded object that's connected to the water, mm. so through hole, say, then the path from that through hole back to battery negative is going to be through the water. Yeah. And whichever side of that circuit has got the positive connection is going to get uh, eaten up regardless of whether it's zinc or bronze or yeah. anything else. And whichever is the negative side of that circuit is not going to get eaten up. So if you had a path from bronze to zinc, the bronze gets eaten up and the zinc does nothing to stop yeah. it. That's a straight current corrosion. And uh, if you think about the, uh, in, in his situation, he's got, I think it's, it's a shaft anode, didn't he say? I'm burning, mm -hmm. no, it's just sinks. Yeah. So the, the fault would have to be on the positive side to the zinc anode and then back to say a bonded bronze yeah. through hole, which is obviously possible. Um, but my guess is it's straight current corrosion. You mean uh, it's uh, a galvanic corrosion, right? Not straight current corrosion. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He or she is going through sinks at the dock. Um, almost certainly because there's no galvanic isolator or isolation transformer yeah. in the circuit. So there's nothing to break the connectivity from this boat to the dock and then to other boats on the dock. Yeah. And the zincs on this boat are providing protection yeah. to a bunch of other boats on yeah. the dock. I mean, let's say you have like a metal, metal piling on the dock yeah. or something that's yeah. basically going to eat up your zinc. In. Yes. In terms of an easy way to tell with a multimeter, not with the boat in the water. Typically, if we're testing for, for galvanic uh, and issues and stray current issues with the boat in the water, we'll hang a silver, silver chloride half mm -hmm. cell over the side of the boat and then we can measure various voltages or else we're going to test with a sophisticated uh, DC uh, clamp meter, mm -hmm. ammeter, to check for current flows between the boat and the dock. Um, and which are not standard functions with a normal multimeter, yeah. even a fairly expensive one like that. Hey. I actually, Jan, I have one of those half cells okay. in my suitcase, yeah. believe it or not. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, <laughs> you see if right. somebody's serious about boat electrics right. if he's traveling to Germany right. with, with a right. half cell. <laughs> yeah, it, it did uh, raise a few eyebrows when I went through the TSA checkpoint. <laughs> In, in my uh, carry-on bags <laughs> with all of these cables. <laughs> so well, we have a device here, which, which they're hard to find now. You used to be able to buy them in pretty much any marine chandlery, but mm -hmm. I suppose the sales were so low, yeah. uh, which you hang over the water, in, in the water, over the side of the boat, like and it has a very long lead, and then you plug that into a multimeter in its DC volts mode. You have to pull the existing leads out. And then um, you have another long lead that you plug in and then with this device in the water and in the DC volts mode yeah. you can clip this onto any piece of metal that you think might be uh, connected into the bonding circuit and it's going to read a voltage, a millivoltage. Mm -hmm. We're talking somewhere between 0.2 of a volt and 0.9 of a volt mm -hmm. and um, if you have a bonding circuit on the boat and you go to all of the bits of metal and they all read the same voltage, you know, first of all, that the bonding circuit's working. Mm -hmm. And secondly, if they're all reading a voltage close to the voltage you get with a piece of zinc, which is uh, close to minus one volt, then you know the zinc is working. Yeah. So there's all kinds of tests we can do with this. Um, so this is a long way of saying that no, with a standard multimeter, it, it's hard to deal with some of these issues, but with the right piece of kit, it's actually yeah. fairly easy to do the uh, troubleshooting and to figure these yeah. things out. Yeah. I mean, but the first thing I mean, we could recommend this person would be to, in case there is no galvanic isolator or isolation transformer on the boat, 
that would be the that's first the thing. Obvious yeah, fix. that's the obvious fix. So well, the, the even more obvious fix is don't plug in. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you have enough <laughs> solar like I do, um, right. it shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> well, and that's the other thing. Uh, even when we want to charge our batteries, and I have a galvanic isolator, uh, and in any case, I have my onboard AC systems isolated from the uh, short power connection. I still only plug in and charge yeah. the batteries, and only unplug again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just so that I eliminate the possibility of uh, bringing on that galvanic corrosion circuit through yeah. the shore power yeah. cord. Yeah, also whenever I'm not using shore power for cooking or something like that, I always unplug. And most of the, my devices are running on, on 12 volt and the solar is actually taking care of that, at least in the med year round. But I mean, it's definitely worthwhile checking your, uh, your grounding system, your AC grounding system and see if you have a galvanic isolator or uh, isolation transformer because that's yeah basically yeah, a standard piece of kit that you should should have on any map. and we cover all of this in detail in our boat how to exactly in our lessons. ac courses on uh, yeah basically we have two modules there on on ac systems yeah. and then one on bonding and one on galvanic corrosion so if you if you go through all of this you're pretty much covered so yeah, yeah check out boathowto.com and see you next time. <laughs> and make sure to pack your half cell again. <laughs>